Hello and welcome to Webdev Mentors YouTube channel and you are watching programming in Java series for beginners. So in this video we are going to see about bitwise operators in Java. So we have already seen a list of bitwise operators in our operators in Java video. But it was very difficult for me to explain bitwise operators functions and also it might have been very very difficult for you to grasp it. We need to actually implement them practically in a program in order to understand the functionality and operations that a bitwise operator can perform. So in this video, we're going to actually implement each of these operators in a program and find the values of it. Even I don't know uh, what are all the values that it's going to give. So we're going to test it out. I'm going to use my Eclipse IDE as usual in order to run the program. So I'm going to open my Eclipse IDE using the Web Dev Mentors project folder where my files will be saved. So here we are. I've opened the Eclipse IDE. I'm going to create my class file, which is going to be bitwise operator. Sorry about that. No spaces. I created the class and it's available now. So I'm going to declare my main method public static void main with string space args. So now I'm going to declare a couple of variables, integer variables, on which we can apply these bitwise operators that we have seen. So I'm going to declare integer a is equal to 15, and integer b is equal to 27. So before getting into the bitwise operators, we have to find the binary values of these two numbers. So we have already seen bitwise operator does a lot of binary work, so it's going to take up the binary value of your decimal value and apply some operations or functions on them and then give back the decimal value. So in order to understand the concept clearly we have to first find out the binary values of these numbers. So the binary value of 15 is 0, 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1, 1. So the binary value of 27, triple zero one and double one zero sorry one zero double one yeah I think this is correct so this is the binary value of 15 and 27 now we're going to apply the first set of bitwise operators on these two numbers so the first is binary and operator which is and which can be get from the shift 7 so int and is equal to a and b. So we're going to find the bitwise AND or binary AND between A and B. So the function of binary AND is that it finds the bit that is set on both the numbers and returns them as a value for you. So the next is binary R whose function is nothing but finding any one of the bits. So it's going to check at least one of the bit is set. So if one of the bit is set, it's going to return you the value as set for that. So I'm going to get A R B and the next is binary XR operator. It's shift six in order to get this symbol. So int XR is equal to a XR B. So what XR operator does is that it's going to find the bit that is set in only one of the variables or one of the values. And the next is the binary ones complement. Once complement. And the symbol for that is okay. and int ones complement is equal to once complement a. So you're going to apply it on only one of the variables because you have to get the once complement of a alone. You cannot get both at the same time. So we have seen that and r and xr needs two variables. Once complement needs only one variable. So before going into the shift operators in bitwise operators, let's find the values of these operators first. So system dot out dot branch ln so and operator seems like a lot of spelling mistakes uh, in my 
typing and the command sections of each of the operators. Not spelling mistakes actually, just the capitals that I messed up. So and R XR once complement. So now we're going to actually add up all those value to print them out. So R it's called a concatenation operator. The plus is concatenation operator if it is used along with the integer values or the sequence of characters. So finally once complement. So I've already shown you how to actually get the suggestions if you're not getting it use control space. So I'm going to run this program now and we're getting the output and operator is returning 11. So let's see how you're getting 11 for this. So the binary value of 11 is 0000, 0, 0, 0 and 1011. So let's cross check the values in here and is going to return only the bits that are set on both the variables. So it's going to be like the first bit in here is set on both A and B. Second one is not set in B. Third one is set on both A and B. And fourth one is also set in both A and B. And in here you can clearly see that all are zero but only one bit of the B value is set. So it's not set in A so we're not going to use it so it's going to be zero all throughout. So in here we have already seen that the first bit is set, second one is not set in the B, third one is set on both, so we're getting one in here, fourth one is also set on both, so we're getting one in here. So that's the reason why we have been given 11 as the answer for AND operator. So let's go to R operator, which is returning 31, so the binary value of 31, triple zero one, space 1111. So what R operator does is that it's going to check at least one of the bit is set on the both variables. So if it is set, it's going to return 1 as a bit. So we're having 1 in B for here, so it's going to return 1 in here. So the rest of the bits are 0, so it's not going to set any of the bits. So in here we have both set, so as it has at least one of the bits set as 1, we are getting 1 in here. So again, in here, 1 is set, so we got the conditions clear, so we got 1 set in here as well. So same goes with the last two numbers where at least one of them are set. It's going to clear the condition and it's going to set one in here as well. So that is the reason why you got 31 as value for R. So if we go into XR and sorry, so XR gives you 20 as value. So the binary equivalent of 20 is triple zero one zero one zero zero. So XR does the operation of finding the bit which is set in only one of the variables. So not at least one, it's only one. So it should not be set on both the variables. It should not be set on both A and B. So we have zero in here. So first three or zero for both the variables. So we are setting zero for first three. And in the fourth bit, we're seeing that the one is set on 27. That is the B variable alone. So as only one of the bits are set in comparison, we're going to put 1 in here. So for the next bit, we're seeing that the both the variables have 1 set for them. So we're going to put 0 for them because in XR, only one of the bit has to be set as 1. And the next is 1 is set on A, but 0 for B. So we have the conditions clear and 1 is set on here. So in next third bit, that is actually seventh bit, it's 1 on both variables. So it's going to be 0 as we have both the bits set and that goes for 8th bit as well because both the variables has one set as its bit it's going to be 0. So that's the reason why we're getting 20 as the value for XOR operator. So finally we have the ones complement. The ones complement of 15 is going to be minus 16. We have to first find the actual binary value of A which is 15. We have already found that the binary equivalent of 16 minus 16 is equal to 0001 0000. So it might be puzzled that uh, the ones complement of 15 should be 1111 0000. But we're getting the signed binary number, so minus 16. So you have to consider two's complement value 
of this minus 16. So it's going to be triple zero one double zero double zero. You can actually check it with some kind of a two's complement calculator or if you're good at finding the two's complement and one complement then you can go ahead and find it all by yourself by doing the calculations. So we're going into the next set of operators, the shift operators. So first is binary left shift operators. Symbol is less than less than and int left shift is equal to a the variable then the symbol for the operator and then the number of bits you want to left shift. The next is binary right shift operator greater than greater than int right shift is equal to a greater than greater than two bits. So I want to left shift two bits and right shift two bits and save it in left shift and right shift. Then finally we have binary right shift zero fold operator. So this is kind of a complicated operator where it's going to actually fill up the bits with zero. So we're going to see it and shift right zero. C equal to A greater than greater than greater than and I'm going to do it for the same two bits. Now we have to actually print them out. So I'm going to copy this line in order to use it. Paste it, paste it, paste it. So left shift, left shift, right shift, and finally we're going into shift, right, zero. So the values are left shift, right shift, and shift right zero. So I'm going to print them out and we're getting the value left shift operator 60, right shift operator 3 and shift right zero operator 3. So it's kind of the same value. Let's actually see how it came now. First is 60 so I'm going to go with 60 which we got from the left shift operator. So the value goes like uh, the binary value of 60 is 0 0 one 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 zero zero so we have shifted two bits to the left so just move to the left and we have added two zeros to this number at the end and shifted them like this so this is the value that we got and the actual decimal value of this number is 60 so I'm just putting back the numbers okay. so we got 3 as the value for right shift operator so the binary equivalent of that is 0, 0, 0, 0, space, 0, 0, 1, 1. So we're going to right shift the number 2 bits. So if I shift it to the right, I'm going to add two zeros at the front. So we're going to take away the last two numbers. So that's what we got for this value. So the decimal equivalent of this number is 3. So I'm going to put back the number again. And finally, we got the shift right zero operator. It's pretty much uh, the same value, 3. And the slight difference is that in shift right zero operator, the shifted values will be filled up by 0. So when the number gets complex, it can be seen. So, so that ends the actual program for the bitwise operators. It also ends the video. Thank you for watching this video and hope it was very useful. If you find this video useful, please like the video and also share it with your friends. And if you have any comments or suggestions or feedbacks, please feel free to share it in the comment section of this video or in our Google Plus page, Facebook page or Twitter feed. You can also contact me personally through the social links I have shared in the description section of this video. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.